office. So, uh, so this call I was originally called out because um, somebody told me that there was a problem with the economizer just being stuck open. Well, turns out that the unit was overheating. And then I found out that uh, two other units in the same space were also overheating. So I had three RTUs that kept uh, tripping on high limit. Um, and it was for a restaurant. Um, so, uh, yeah, a, a failed economizer call turned into three RTUs that were going on high limits. So, uh, here's how it went. So here we go. Okay. So I have a W2 call and we have a W1 call. So let's see if we have any error codes going on. One, two, three, four. So we got four flashes. So let's see if we can find our error codes here. And right here for flash limit switch fault okay so let's see what's going on with that okay so we have our primary limit and we have our auxiliary limit this one is a I think they're both auto reset so I should be getting zero volts if it's closed which I am on that one and then we shall check this one should have zero volts all right, so it's closed. So we need to go ahead and reset and find out what's going on. Make sure the blower is running normally. Um, also, we want to check our gas pressure. Sometimes the gas pressure, if it's too high on this thing, it can cause it to trip. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, check our filters. The filters look clean. I'm gonna pull the filters out and make sure the coil's clear. And then we'll go from there. All right, well, filters are pretty clean. Coil is clear. Alrighty, so uh, we're checking our blower motor. So it's on the A setting, which means it maxes out at like seven volts of DC. So we're right there. So it's on full blast. Um, amp draw seems to be normal. Of course, keep in mind we have all the panels open. We got heat now because I reset it. Um, yeah, amp draw is normal. I'm gonna put this door back on and see what's going on. Anyway, uh, we're going to shut this off and uh, we're going to check the gas pressure. Yeah, so I just got a high limit right now. See? One, two. If we look here, two. Yeah, limit switch fault. So the burners look like they're burning too hot. So we're going to go ahead and kill it. Let's go ahead and get our uh, manometer hooked up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and check the gas pressure. So this is a two-stage uh, gas valve so we have low fire high fire so 1.7 inches water column for low three and a half for high uh, the pressure port is back here or you can use this um, but that's pain in the butt so we're going to go with this so there we go. okay so we got our manometers hooked up this one here is hooked up to our inlet and this is worked up to our outlet so we're going to turn the gas back on see what our inlet pressure is and we're at 15.15 all right, so if we look at our unit, we gotta see what our incoming pressure requirement is. Incoming gas pressure. So three and a half manifold, gas supply, 13. So we're okay, we're within spec, okay. Cool, right? No, oh, actually it's at eight. So it might've just taken a minute for this, so. We should be all right. Uh, we might have to actually adjust this guy, uh, but we'll see, because we're gonna probably end up turning this down. So I have W2 disconnected, that way we're only getting call for W1. We will adjust and check the gas pressure for the uh, low fire, and then we will hook up the W2 to check the high fire. So here we go. Okay, so I got tired of waiting, so we're gonna go ahead and just jump out our W. We're gonna go ahead and drop our gas pressure. So we're turning counterclockwise, bring it down. We want 1.7. Tripped on high pressure again, or high temperature. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so high fire is at 3.3. We got low fire to 1.7. It's still tripping, even with all the doors off. So I, I got a, I got an airflow problem somewhere. Just gonna find an access hatch. Here's the next one. Aha! Fire damper 
is closed. All right, so this is for the other RTU that's not working. Yep, damper is closed. This looks like the return side. This one is open. Yeah. So I don't know if I can get to that one, but that's the supply side. Okay. Yep. So we have three dampers that are shut. So we have zero airflow and that's causing our overheats. This is what we're gonna do for now to hold them open until I can get the new clips. Um, all right, so for some reason this thermostat's not kicking on. Uh, I know the disconnect's off, I turned it off. So we need to find out why the thermostat's not powering on. The other two are working, we got airflow again. So it looks like the fire dampers. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, what do you call it, disable those once I leave until I can get the, the new hooks. Um, or the new, uh, what do you call it, to hold it shut. And that's that's gonna be these guys right here. Um, I forget what these are called, um, but basically they're welded together uh, like that, and they hold the thing clo or open. And if it gets too hot, it melts the solder and it pops, and then the whole thing falls down. So these are rated at, I think, 200, maybe 200 degrees or maybe 165. I don't know, anyway. But that's what that's what popped and that's why all three of those are closed why they got why it got that hot i don't know maybe it was a restriction um this coil is completely plugged so who knows but anyway um we're gonna go ahead and see why we're not getting 24 volts to the thermostat okay so we're checking for high voltage so we have that uh one and two two and three we're good and one and three all right cool so now we're going to go ahead and check R and C going to our board. We have nothing. We're going to check our transformer. It's not tripped. Okay. This is our 24 uh, secondary side. And so we do have it. So the board's dead. Uh, so this is one of the ones with an airflow problem as well. So it's possible that maybe it tripped the uh, high limit switch. Some, some of, sometimes the high limit switches will kill power to the board or stop power going to the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Stop power from going to the thermostat. So we're gonna see that. Maybe it just got stuck and hasn't reset. Sometimes if you just flick it, that'll reset it. So let's go ahead and find that thing. It's gonna be in there somewhere. We're gonna go ahead and check our primary limit. So if we have 24 volts, that means it's open. So this one's closed, the auxiliary. Oh, this is a manual reset. So. Normally I just push the button, but we'll go ahead and test it since we're doing this for you guys. So you see we have 24 volts, so it's open. So if I reset this, try not to get shock west. I think I reset it. I didn't feel click, but let's check. You can see we have zero, whoops, we got zero volts. So it is now closed. I can see the lights on the board. So now, if we go R to C, we should have 24 volts. And we do. So yeah, the auxiliary limit, if it trips, it kills power to the board. So that means you have high voltage going into your transformer, right? Then you have the uh, secondary side, 24 volts goes into there, blah, 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 comes back to the board. So if that trips, cuts that cuts the power to the board so it won't do anything so anyway uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and um put this all back together so we're back at this call um the uh pvc was just to hold it until i could get these ordered uh so the way these work is at 100 so the 20d that's i think that's telling you like the size and then 165 so at 165 degrees uh this solder right here will melt and it will separate causing that damper to close um, according to the damper uh, the model number on the actual damper it was supposed to be 212 degrees so for some reason that was different so I ordered these based off the model number off of the actual damper assembly so you can see this one's at 212 22d so that's the size so this is what we're going to put in those three dampers so the discharge on those heaters can be all the way up to 165 170 degrees because these dampers are like pretty much right underneath the units obviously it, it you know it cools down a little bit by the time it hits the supply but it can hit those temperatures and that's why all three of them melted so we're going to pop these 212s in there and it should be good now going forward but uh but yeah that's that's what these are for 
these are for sm those smoke dampers. So in the case there's a fire, um, you know, the idea is hot air would go into the ventilation system, uh, melt these so they would close so it's not, you know, circulating smoke throughout the building. Uh, so this is a mechanical way of doing it where it just, you know, it's designed to fail at a certain temperature. So let's go ahead and put these in. All right, so I forgot to uh, record the ending, but basically I changed out those uh, fusible links. That's what they're called, fusible links. Um, so I changed them all out. Uh, everything was good to go. Uh, took all that PVC stuff out of the dampers. And, um, you know, it's been a few days after I did that and no callback. So it seems to be good. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out if you come across this issue. Uh, when you're dealing with commercial buildings, sometimes you're going to have those fire dampers. So if um, I actually, I couldn't film inside, but I was using my uh, anom anometer to see if there was airflow and I was getting zero airflow on all three of those units. So that's how I came to the conclusion that there was some kind of airflow restriction. Now with the commercial buildings, they're gonna have those, those uh, smoke dampers. Sometimes they actually have um, electronically controlled actuators that will hold it open and it's attached to the fire um, alarm system. So if a fire alarm system trips, it will, you know, use a motor actuator to close those. But then they'll also have the fusible links in case for some reason the motors fail. That way, if you didn't get hot enough air through there, it'll just fail and close it manually um, without power involved. Um, but in this case, we didn't have that. These were just pure manual, you know, des designed to fail uh, dampers. So, but um, that's why, you know, that, that was our airflow problem. There was like zero airflow going down there. So anyway, um, hopefully this helps you out if you come across this situation. So uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment. Tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks.